Om Gyan to Melandasya Gyanangyana Salakaya Chaksu Un Militan Vyana Tasma Shri Vivinamaha Ma Om Vishnu Padai Krishna Pustaya Bhutale Shri Bhakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinare Namaste Sarasuri Devi Om Gyanari Pachari Nani Ever Say Sasunya Vadi Astyatya De Satayane Panchakopa to Rukischa, Kripa Sindhu to Ebacha, Patitanam Pavane Bio, Vaishnavi Bio, Lumaho Lumaha, Jaisa Krishna, Chaitanya, Vitivinda, Sri Advaita Gadakar, Sri Vasadi Gaur, Bhaktivinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Just one minute. <laughs> Srila Rupa Goswami describes in the Nectar of Devotion the uh, principles that make up the stages of nine levels of practice of bhakti or these are called the nine stages of bhakti or the nine steps towards pure devotional service. When we speak of devotional service, we actually indicate pure devotional service. Uh, just like there's pure water, pure air, pure relationships, pure devotional service. It's called Ananya Bhakti, unalloyed devotion. And that devotion that is complete and we find no other ingredient in it but devotional service. And in order to achieve pure devotional service, one has to understand the different stages that one has to traverse in order to reach this stage of pure devotional service. Rupa Goswami describes Adao Strada, faith. Faith is a moving principle that inspires one to do something in a certain way in order to achieve a certain result. Faith is the principle where one will accept a way to achieve what they want to achieve, even though they cannot see or understand the conclusion or the way to the conclusion. Faith is uh, the principle that where bhakti is situated on. In other words, wherever you're practicing in the level of devotional service, faith is 
uh, there to some degree or other. And when you have complete faith, that is called shraddha, or, or that faith that is not shaken or moved or disturbed in any situation. But this faith that's described in, by Rupa Goswami is that faith which motivates one towards devotional service. And what does that do? That curates a type of curiosity where one wants to understand what is devotional service. And that conclusion comes where when one starts to associate with devotees. And that's the next stage that is called Sadhu Sangha. Sadhu means, you know, devotees in this case. And Sangha means together. Together with devotees executing the process mm -hmm. of Krishna consciousness. And that Sadhu Sangha is exhibited by executing the principles that make a devotional service and performing activities in relationship to Krishna. In other words, the activities of devotional service. When one gets a feel for these activities, one becomes attracted to them. Through that attracted attraction, the intensity of the activities increases. But one wants to associate more, one wants to practice more, one starts to look at devotional service not as something less extra, but something uh, as one's goal in life. In other words, one starts to taste the knowledge and the happiness that comes by way of serving the Lord, which is intrinsic in devotional service. The devotional service makes up the activities that are to be performed in relationship to the Lord, especially hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. So when we hear and chant the glories of the Lord, we are free from uh, the effects of material energy. So in that sadhu sangha, which includes performing activities, such as worshiping the Lord, or doing things to please the Lord, this is all connected with the principle of Sadhu Sangha. Everything has to be done. And Prabhupada makes that point really clearly that devotional service means together. Just like the word kirtan, when you add the word san in front of it, S-A-N, you're saying uh, together performing kirtan, not just with one, with many. San means with many. But san also means uh, the complete way to perform the activity. So san kirtan means complete glorification of the Lord. In other words, there's no other activity being performed. All, everyone is focused on that particular goal to glorify the Lord, and that is called Sankirtan. And when you say Harinam, Sankirtan, that means the uh, mood of glorification is to chant the holy names. Mm -hmm. So when one um, starts to get a taste for the idea for Sadhu Sangha, by serving the Lord in that association, one starts to think in terms, well, maybe I should do this as a regular thing. In other words, let, let me make this. My faith has become stronger through my experience, and now I want to become a regular devotee. I want to actually become uh, active in devotional service always. And that is called bhajana kriya, 
or looking for shelter of devotional service exclusively. Now that exclusive shelter of devotional service is provided by Krishna through his agency, the, the spiritual master. Now the agency, the spiritual master is Krishna's personal representative in the material world who uh, allows the aspiring devotee the, the process of devotional service in such a way that it's progressive. In other words, it's free from mistakes or errors or wrong type of thinking. In other words, if we receive knowledge where we understand what to do and what not to do and how to do what we should do also. And that's all part of devotional service. Chakshu dan dilo ye janmi janmi prabhu se. Dibhigyan ridai prakasita. Dibhigyan means transcendental knowledge is provided by the spiritual master in an external way in order to uh, guide one and inspire one in the execution of devotional service, which brings one to the platform of uh, fixation. So that we sometimes we say bhajana kriya is the stage of initiation, where one formally accepts the spiritual master as one's representative in the material world to guide one back to Krishna and the spiritual world. In other words, the spiritual master is Krishna's eternal associate, and he is providing the association of Krishna through, by giving relevant instructions and guidance in the execution of activities which are meant to please Krishna. We don't know whether we can please Krishna or not, but we can please the spiritual master. And it says it says that if you please the spiritual master, you please Krishna. Um, the last verse in the Guru Vastikam prayers. Um, uh, what is that last verse? Saksad Ritwin Nasamasta Sasti Yasya Prasada Bhagavad Yasya Prashada Bhagavad Prashado Yasya Prashadan Nagati Kotopi. And that is the verse that guides one back in devotional service. Yasya Prashada. Bhagavad Prashado Yasya Prashadan Nagati Kotopi. Uh, Nagati Kotopi means one cannot make any advancement unless one uh, pleases the spiritual master. By pleasing the spiritual master, the doors to Krishna consciousness become wide open. So the spiritual master is easily pleased by the sincere endeavor of the devotee. It's not the expertise that one applies in the execution of devotional service. It's the sincerity by which one, one acts in devotional service by trying to perform the activity in a way that is pleasing to the spiritual master. And Krishna is pleased and the spiritual, then the Lord is automatically pleased. And if one tries to please Krishna, Without trying to please the spiritual master, it's called Nagatiko Topi. And then, in other words, it's, uh, it has no effect. It has no effect. So it makes the process easy. Sometimes people ask, well, why we have to accept the spiritual master? Because the spiritual master is more like a, a father who guides you to your eternal father, uh, Krishna. Um, we can't see Krishna. How much do we know about Krishna? 
even if we can gain so much knowledge about Krishna, it's insignificant compared to the knowledge that is there available. But one gains knowledge and detachment from material life through execution of devotional service. And that is the results of pleasing Krishna. Yeah, and that's also mentioned in the Srimad Bhagavatam in the second chapter of the first canto. Uh, Hari Toshanam. Hari Hari means Lord, Toshanam means to please. So one who pleases the Lord, the path to devotional, the path towards the lotus feet of the Spirit, the, of the Supreme Lord is easily attainable or wide open, you might say. So it's a necessary step to um, and it's any, it's actually nice in the sense that one gets help on the path back to God. And there are many people who practice some kind of religious activity without proper guidance, and they remain on the sentimental platform, not knowing exactly what to do or how to do it. Um, their sentiment is sometimes correct in most of the Lord is pleased. Of course, the Lord is pleased by sincere devotion. But that serious devotion has to be authorized. Shruti, Shmishti, Puranadi, Pancharatriki, Vidi, Vidam, which means that the path of devotional service has to according to Shruti, Shmiti, Puranadi. Shruti means the Vedas, Shmiti means that part of the Vedas, which common, which are the uh, contemporary understandings of the Shrutis or the commentaries on the Shrutis, which are present. And the Puranas are the supportive features of these uh, activities. Otherwise, uh, devotional service, as it says in the Bhagavad Gita, knowledge without Devotion is mental speculation and devotion without knowledge is simply sentiment or fanaticism. Fanaticism in the sense that one, de one dis decides what is devotional life and what is not according to one's own whims or ideas. And that is not acceptable. So one has to follow the authorized process. And just like if you want to go on a trip, there's a way to get there. <laughs> and there's a procedure on how you must travel in order to get there. You may have different ways to travel, but still you have to be going in the right direction by the authorized forms that are given, such as you might walk or you might you might take a plane or you might use a bus or a car or a train. In other words, you have to know where, where you're going to go, go and how to get there. <laughs> well, that's important. And that's where the spiritual master makes it easy. He's the friend of the devotees. He's not simply a restrictive element that makes it devotional service hard. We have to understand that to approach the all pure, we also have to be pure. We can't approach Krishna in our unpurified state, but that's where the spiritual master comes in. He allows our unpurified state to become purified by offering what we offer to Krishna through him, which he offers to Krishna, and then the offering reaches Krishna. So he becomes our transparent via medium. The spiritual master is more like, you know, we use the analogy, eyeglasses. Eyeglasses aid in giving vision, but the eyeglasses don't see. There's no seeing power in the eyeglass. It's not like the eyeglasses can see. They can't. There's nothing there. To, that they, but they aid in the process of seeing. 
So when we use the eyeglasses, because we have cataracts or we have limited vision, uh, the, the eyeglasses open up the object so we can see it. But all they are is a medium to the object and, and they're not in itself independent, but they are necessary. They are necessary. And so the spiritual master is more like the eyeglasses which we use in order to engage in devotional service. And then through following carefully the instructions of the spiritual master, we overcome those things that, that are blocks in our spiritual life. And these are called anarthas. Artha means wanted. Anartha means that which is unwanted or inauspicious, unnecessary. And these are the things that we have associated with in the material world. And there's various types of anarthas that, are, that have to be removed in order to make progress in devotional service. Just like before you can understand what is, you also have to understand what is not and avoid what is not at the same time. So there are things that we have to avoid or things that are part of our nature due to our association with material, we call them material desires, but they're more than material desires. They are, they are, are characteristics that we have accumulated to material association. And they come out in different ways. These uh, unarthas. And unless we remove these unarthas from our ways of thinking and our ways of acting, we, the progress in devotional service is practically nil. So here's what the spiritual master guides one to understand what is the anartha and how to avoid it and apply what is necessary. Just like it says, you have to eat, but you must eat prasadam. You must sing, but you must sing in those songs that glorify the Lord. You must uh, associate, but you must associate with people who are also practicing devotional service. So if we do the opposite in any of these categories, then we are, we are restricting our process of devotional service. And unless the art and arthas are removed after a period of time, the arthas may, an arthas may also come strong enough where they take one away from devotional service. So one has to carefully understand what to avoid and what to accept. And as it says, that is the stage of called anartha nirvritti, means to re those anarthas are being removed. Now Rupa Goswami says when one gets 75% of one's anarthas removed, then one can proceed to the next stage of bhakti, which is called nishta. Nishta means firm faith. That means one is situated nicely in devotional service and is not derailed, deterred, or uh, uh, impeded in any way in one's execution of devotional service. One is fixed. Although challenges, obstacles, and even previous anarthas may appear when one is situated on anartha nivritti, one can continue to execute devotional service and one will make progress. As that progress and that nishta means steadiness in bhakti. It, is, it doesn't necessarily mean steadiness in the activities we perform. It means steadiness in our devotional mood. We become attached to serving Krishna in a way that is uh, authorized, in other words, fixed on the instructions of the spiritual master. We develop the proper mood. 
And then, then when that progresses even further, we get to the stage of ruchi. Ruchi means um, a sweet taste where no longer one is even looking towards material life anymore. One is fixed in Krishna consciousness and one is tasting continuously, not just intermittently, but continuously the happiness of devotional service. When it's intermittent, we are still on the lower stages. When we get to the stage of ruchi, then there is a sweet taste that pervades all of the activities we perform. And that sweet taste is not dependent on the activity itself, but it, it's simply dependent on our participation in the activity. In other words, even if the activity is, um, for instance, if kirtan is not done with melodious singing and proper melodies, it's uh, attractive because it is kirtan. In other words, because it's the it, because we're glorifying the Lord, it is pleasing. And then when that stage reaches perfection or maturity, you might say, then we come to the stage of uh, ashakti. Ashakti means attachment to Krishna. Just like one gets attached to something. We might even say, you read the word addicted. That addiction or that attachment comes by one is constantly thinking of Krishna and how to serve Krishna 24 hours a day. One of the symptoms of a shakti is that uh, they don't waste any time doing any other activities but the original service. They're fixed 24 hours a day, serving the Lord and offering their devotion to the Lord. Uh, that akshakti has nine different characteristics. And one of them is uh, a strong desire to use every moment in devotional service. Um, the next stage is um, the stage before perfection, which has the symptoms of the perfectional stage, and that is called bhava. Bhava means deep, sentimental expressions of devotion towards Krishna. It is that sentiment that hasn't reached perfection yet, but it is moving in that direction. Where one thinks of how to serve Krishna in different ways, one cannot forget, forget Krishna even, even for a moment. One is absorbed in thinking how to serve the Lord. One, when one sees a picture of the Lord or the deity of the Lord, immediately they get overwhelmed with emotion. Um, they are, um, their hearts are fully uh, connected to the Lord in loving sentiment. And that is called the Baba stage. And that has six stages within it. The intensity of these emotions moves through different levels. When it reaches perfection, then one moves to the next stage, which is prema, that is pure love for Krishna. And that pure love for Krishna is uh, the nature of the soul's existence. In other words, we have reached self-realization. We realize who we are in the sense that we have no more spirit and material identity, nor any more material attachments, nor more any more material tendencies. Everything becomes pure in devotion to the Lord. And one cannot stop the thinking of the Lord. And in that stage of prema, there are different stages of expression where one will go through different types of uh, expressions of happiness, where there will be rolling on the ground, there will be shedding of tears, there will be um, standing of the hairs on the body, changing colors in the body, eight symptoms of loving ecstasy on the stage of prema. And that's preliminary. The prema stage has eight stages. It's the most 
complex level of bhakti as love for Krishna takes different twists and turns and expressions according to what is doing what one is doing and what one is and how one is thinking about the Lord in different ways. And these moods are nicely explained in Nectar of Devotion in the latter parts of the book, but mostly you'll find a lot of it in uh, Bhakti Vinoda Kaur's book, Jaiva Dharma, which teaches the whole process of pure devotional service. And therein he describes in a dialogue type of setting, the different emotions that come by way of prema. And then as you go, as one reaches higher and higher levels of prema, one is no longer able to function materially. In other words, one becomes dysfunctional on the material level. And they become somewhat of a social outcast and cannot function. <laughs> Learn more about that when we study the Srimad Bhagavatam with Krishna's eternal associates in the spiritual world, uh, per, per, uh, particularly his mother and father, Nanda Maharaj, and Mother Yasoda, uh, illustrate many of the symptoms of, of Prema, along with the cowherd boys. They all exhibit unlimited Prema, and they be, you become Krishna addicted here. Just like an, an alcoholic, he can't stop drinking and he'll do anything to continue his drinking. And so in the same way, a devotee cannot stop thinking of Krishna and doesn't want to stop thinking and doesn't even know how to stop thinking. If you ask someone in that stage not to think of Krishna, they'll think you're mad. It's not possible. <laughs> That's all they can do. <laughs> And that's personified in its ultimate by Srimati Radharani, who is on the stage of the highest level of love, which is called Mahabhava. Um, there, are only, there are only three people in existence that we know of that have reached that stage. That is Lord Chaitanya and Radharani and Sri Madhavendra Puri. No one else has that, that we can say has reached that pure stage of unlimited Mahabhava, stage of bhakti. Um, and so this is the whole process coming from faith to association, to shelter, to removal of anartas, to fixation, to sweet taste, to emotion, to intensity of emotion, and finally to pure loving emotion in the mood of the, the residence of Vrindavan Dham. That's a wonderful process. Um, one should see, according to the descriptions given to us in Nectar of Devotion, on which level we are practicing devotional service. One can also ask the spiritual master, where am I and what is my next step towards uh, reaching perfection and how to attain that step also. Well, that is the process of pure devotional service. Okay, so we'll uh, open it up for any kind of comments or questions. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for explaining it in so much detail. Thank you so much. Uh, dear that, Lord, was, that was a that wasn't detail at all. That was just that was a, that was a summary <laughs> at best. Yes, but I got to know many points, Maharaj. Thank you so much for that. I request devotees, please, uh, if there are any questions, comments, please go ahead.
Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to you, Guru Maharaj. Uh, thank you for outlining the stages of bhakti. I have a question about anartha nivritti. Does, and I do understand that 75% of anarthas <coughs> excuse me, have to be gone before one reaches the stage of nishtha. Up to what point do the 25% still continue to plague us on the way to Krishna Prem? Well, it also, it, it only gets removed on, on Prema. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. It says uh, when you see Krishna face to face. <laughs> it doesn't necessarily have to be like that, but it can carry that far. Hmm. And that's yeah. offenses. And that is the offenses that include the aparads. The hmm. aparads are the last 25%. We still uh, commit mistakes, make, and commit offenses in the execution of devotional service. That's why one has to be very keen to know what are the offenses and what and how to avoid them. Fast progress in devotional service is easy when we avoid offenses. Mm. And of course, the 10 offenses to the holy name are the main ones that we should very carefully avoid. Mm. But there are also there are offenses to uh, uh, Offenses to the Lord, there's offenses to the name, offenses to Vaishnavas, offenses to living entities in general. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we also add one offenses to the Holy Dham also. That's for those who, who live in the Dham. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. My humble obeisances. Mm -hmm. Don't get discouraged. <laughs> Discouragement is not a part of Krishna consciousness. If it seems overwhelming, it's just because we're seeing, we're, we're thinking we, we can do it or we can't do it. We think I can do it or I can't do it. But that that is that is a limited form of thinking. We can do it with the mercy of the Lord only. Mm. Therefore, accessing that mercy makes the process uh, quick or easier. Yes, Guru Maharaj. I can see that all too well that unless one gets the mercy, it's just impossible to make uh, progress. So begging for the mercy of the Lord is really key to making any kind of advancement. And then... Yeah. We try to adjust the material energy to, f to fit into our conception of devotional service. Well, you can't adjust the material energy because material energy works under Krishna's control. Mm. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. My humble. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna Maharaj. No, I'm not. Uh... Uh, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. And then with Pranam Maharaj to you. Hare Krishna. My question is uh, uh, the, is, is that uh, if, we, um, if we are on the stage of Shraddha, should we get uh, over it totally I mean we should get totally fixed and totally cross over that stage and then we go to the next uh, stage or is uh, the, the, the stage of Shraddha is overcome by just by regular association with devotees so is it is it that uh, we may be in the halfway of the Shraddha or part of it and we go to the next stage Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, if you're executing devotional service, the activities of devotional service in the association of devotees, you're in, you're in Sadhu Sangha. Okay. So 
temples are there, the association of devotees are available. You have to find how to, you know, to associate with devotees, that's all. Lord Chaitanya told that to Sanatana Goswami that the first principle for progress in devotional service is Atsat Sangha Tyaga E Vaishnava Achar. One should accept the association of devotees and to give up the association of the non devotees. Atsat Sangha, that Asat means that Sangha which is not desirable, Asat. Sangha, a Vaishnava Achar. One should uh, now perform activities in the association of devotees. So one has to be totally fixed on one stage and then you climb the uh, next ladder or maybe you can climb. Those early stages are more or less, they flow together. When you reach the stage of Bhajana Kriya, that means you've accepted the shelter of a bona fide sp spiritual master and you're working under his direction. Before then, you're performing the process. Without that shelter. Okay. Does that make sense? Is that clear? Yes, 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 yes Maharaj. It's quite easy to understand, that's all. Just just hear and chant, perform activities in association with devotees. So now with the restrictions that we've been put on to us on the social level. We can get that association through the media. It's not as direct, but it is comparable in the sense that it inspires us in our Krishna consciousness. So we are discussing Krishna. We are discussing uh, the process of devotional service. We are chanting. We're all doing this all through the media. That is also Sadhu Sangha. Right, Maharaj. And when you actually get a taste for that, and you think, oh, why not? This, this is something I want to do my whole life. Then, then that brings you closer to the stage of accepting Krishna's representative. Then you take shelter. Shelter means to learn the process in a way that is free from uh, what we say speculation. It's, it's done in an authoritative or in an authorized way. Mm -hmm. Bhakti means to follow certain rules and regulations to get onto the spiritual path. Once you're on the spiritual path, then, then those rules and regulations take a backseat and the activities of devotional service become foremost. Hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord, serving the spiritual master according to the directions given. Uh, let's say if uh, there is just one devotee in the house, uh, of the process, it may be a teenager it may be just a female who is dependent on uh, somebody the higher authority in the house itself so they take a decision that um, they want to get go to the next stage or are they uh, do they have to take the permission do they, uh, you were losing your volume there right at the end if someone's in the house and they want to go to the next stage, that's as much as we heard. Okay. Sorry, Maharaj. Let me repeat it again. If there is a person or maybe a female, say teenager or a female, who want to 
go ahead in their uh, mm. go ahead in the process and they mm. do they have to but they're mm. surrounded with you know maybe non devotees mm. or some atheists so mm. uh, do they need to take permission from their author authority in the family no to no devotional service is independent of any any material considerations it's the natural proclivity of the living entity is to love and serve the lord it can be taken up at any time in any situation if one gets from uh mm, sometimes you see in vedic culture there was permission that was uh sought after because of the family connection in other words uh usually it was applied to taking the sannyas order of life and which is a, which is a certain way to perform devotional service but just for basic execution of devotional service one can do it at any time any place any situation permission is not needed permission is given that will give support to them but if the permission is not given still they can still perform devotional service the female has either the authority of the husband or for their father or the and then whatever support you can get that's fine if you can't get any support you know i know devotees that their parents their husbands i know females that their husbands are against their devotional service their parents are against everything is against them but still they're doing it <laughs> it makes it hard because they have to hide and they have to do everything in a very secretive way many times sometimes it comes out and it becomes a bit, uh come, becomes known but otherwise they still can do it The real family is Krishna. <laughs> the spiritual family. Yes, Maharaj. Good morning, Maharaj. Hi Krishna, good morning. Uh, please accept my humble obeisances. I wish to go far away to you. May I ask a question, Guru Maharaj? Prem ki shori Hare Krishna. Hi Krishna. Guru Maharaj, this is more like a, a a double checking if my understanding is correct or not. so when i um, when we were discuss uh, when i was writing we, we and my bhakti shastri we were asked to write a essay um, in the isopanishad chapter on different levels of uh, the, the uh, bhakti nine stages of bhakti and the title of the essay that the teacher gave us was where do you think you stand so it was like more like a personal application of the knowledge that where do you think you stand so when i was writing that essay uh, some things came up Uh, on uh, came up in the in my consciousness. So, Guru Maharaj, just to double check, fall down. Uh, if somebody, let's say, if I have to define a fall down from one particular stage to another particular stage in devotional uh, in devotional stage uh, in devotional stages, <clears throat> does fall down mean <laughs> forgetting Krishna? Is that how we define fall down? that like we forgot krishna or 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 what is fall down at the stage of let's say anartha nivritti uh, that i forgot krishna and started doing anarthas again uh, certain, yeah there's certain anarthas can knock you off the path it doesn't mean you can't get back on the path but being you get knocked off on the path in other words you uh, you've committed some offense you you executed the process in the wrong way which brought you back to the material consciousness material activities again so all you do is when you recognize that or when someone helps you to recognize it you again get back felt but said it's it's third class to fall down but it's first class to get back up 
So you have to get back up, that's all. <laughs> and then again, you have to know how to get back up. But that's usually, that's why association with devotees makes everything easy. Okay, thank you, Maharaj. And Maharaj, one last thing is when we say association of devotees, does it mean the six principles given by Srila Rupa Goswami Prabhupada? That's what association word means? Generally, yes. Yeah. That is the essence of association. If you can, uh, Prabhupada uses the example <clears throat> a king is sitting on a throne, but there's a bug sitting on the king. Now, is the, is the bug associating with the king? No, not at all, although they're very close together. So you can be in, a, in the same proximity physically of another individual. It doesn't mean you're associating. There has to be activities that are based on that association. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Uh, thank you for reinforcing. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Jai Ho. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, Maharaj, I have a couple of questions. Uh, so, a uh, change in the stage of bhakti, uh, moving to a higher stage, uh, should it be a conscious effort or it should happen naturally to one's or both are okay? One has to aspire to move forward. Mm. It's, an active, it's an active principle. <clears throat> and not some, something will just more or less happen automatically okay mm. bhakti vinoda core mentions that if one is not aspiring for the next stage then one may still find themselves on the level that they're practicing okay. you have to be aspiring for the next stage mm. and then you know you have to know what is the next stage and what 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 are the uh, what are the symptoms that indicate one is moving forward to that stage? For instance, nishta. Nishta is, means you're fixed. There's nothing that's going to knock you off the path of devotional service. You may still find obstacles. You may still find blocks. You may also find sometimes you become uh, what we say a little tasteless in your devotional service, but you still, you don't give up. You stay steady, you're fixed. You have faith in Krishna, you have faith in the process. Okay. Thank you, Maharaj. And uh, another question was, uh, is Mahabhav and Prema both are the same stages or and different names or uh, they are different? Mahabhav Maha is a stage of Prema. Okay. It's the eighth, it's the eighth and final stage. So another name of Prema is Mahabhav, you can say that, right? Yeah, there's different levels of Prema. There is, uh, let's see. Let's see, there is, uh, there is Stai Baba. There is uh, the stage of Rati. There's uh, different names that indicate the different stages. That's mentioned in Nectar Devotion and easily mentioned in the Bhakti Vinota course. Jayavadam, it's also mentioned in Srimad Bhagavatam. Okay. We should, we, if you want to make progress in devotional service, we should study the lives of the residents of Vrindavan. This is what we should fix our consciousness on. Hearing Krishna's Vrindavan pastimes mm. with his associates. Not the Rasika ones that are very intimate with Krishna and his intimacy with the gopis. That comes on the higher stages. But the basic ones that are given to us in Srimad Bhagavatam and in other scriptures that are related to the activities of Vrindavan such as, you know, Jiva Goswami's Gopal Champu, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Kavi Kanapur's Ananda Vrindavan, um, you know, uh, Rupa Goswami's 
Ujwala Nilamani, uh, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, uh, especially Sanatana Goswami's Brihad Bhagavatam Rita. We should read in these scriptures and get a deeper understanding of Krishna and his mood, his loving mood with the with the uh, residents in Sri Vrindavan Dham. That is our process that is given to us by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Okay. Okay, but it should be done within the context of authorization and not we just go here and there looking for these things, and, mm. you know, to stick to Srila Prabhupada's presentations of this knowledge. You know. Maharaj, and uh, you mentioned that there are only three personalities who could display this Mahabhav. This that is mentioned in Chaitanya Charitamrita. It says there is no fourth personality. Okay. So it's Radharani, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and Madhavendra Puri. So, yeah, and Radharani. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu could display that because he was in Radha Bhav. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Study the life of Lord Chaitanya. You'll, you'll learn everything about these, the moods of Vrindavan. Mm -hmm. Why are these books given to us? So we can keep them on our shelf and they look nice. We can line them up according to the different sequences. And we have a nice looking bookcase, but that's all. <laughs> Yes, thank you. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Sudha Mataji has raised hand. Mataji, please go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Hare Krishna. Uh, Dharma Pranam Guru Maharaj, uh, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to you. Good Maharaj. Uh, thank you, Maharaj, for the very nice class. Um, I have a question about uh, Guru Maharaj consciousness and activities. I mean, your consciousness is there. Uh, you have a desire, um, like to think about Krishna, to serve him and all that. But when it comes to physical activities, you may not do uh, um, exactly, like example, like uh, um, uh, offering boga, like, you know, doing a prasadam um, morning and evening. Sometimes you may not do the activities, um, uh, um, um, like accordingly so is that considered fall down Maharaj I mean can we like consciousness and also activities should be like uh, same um, well when you're worshiping the Lord at home mm -hmm. and say you have an altar with some pictures you try to do it in a regulated way you know certain time in the morning certain time in the evening maybe also during the day, follow a certain regulation and that allows you to perform the activities regularly and it also gives you a chance to, to increase the quality of the activities by doing it every day at the same time. That's nice. If you don't, it's not a fall down, mm -hmm. but it's not ideal. That means we're little, still a little bit executing devotional service uh, according to, uh, more or less according to the mind. Best to regulate it when it comes to any kind of that activity, especially when I say we're worshiping, say you, just you're worshiping on the altar. Mm -hmm. You have your pictures and you have your regular so you can offer our tea, you can offer some boga. And you try to follow that. Regulation makes it nice. Now, if you're working, living in a temple, you must follow the regulated protocol as given by the temple authorities because the deities have to be regulated. And can we, they cannot be whimsically worshipped anytime we decide to or not decide to. Yeah, and so try to make it right. It's not a fall down though. 
So regulation also helps us to progress in bhakti. Maharaj, like to yeah, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, it helps you to, to fix the mind on Krishna. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you very much. I have a question about like uh, um, uh, committing anarthas, offenses, especially mental offenses. I see the personal struggle when I think about like a uh, lot about mental offenses, not to commit anything, especially like criticizing others, like uh, becoming judgmental. I try, I see like whenever I'm trying, I'm putting an effort not to do that, I'm ending up doing it more. So, <laughs> why? <laughs> so, uh, I, uh, I mean, I feel like uh, the more I try to correct myself, um, I'm trying to repeat that. So, uh, should I do that effort, uh, Guru Maharaj, or I should not think about it and just do like, um, 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 just uh, active devotional. If, if you're standing on a, if you're standing on a corner, and you there's traffic coming, and you don't cross the street. <laughs> so you might say. Well, if I think about not crossing the street, I'll cross the street more. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so you should try to avoid certain activities and try to implement other activities. Yeah. Well, when it comes to the more subtle forms like you're describing, you're saying mm -hmm. like, when I try not to find fault, mm -hmm. then I find fault. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yes, yes. No, you just think when I try, I'm trying not to find fault. So what? What is the antidote for not trying, not trying to find fault? Is to see the good. Mm -hmm. so, so that's mm -hmm. the antidote. If you just try not to find fault, you're acting in a very uh, marginal way, and it's not complete. Mm -hmm. Try not to find fault means. Try to see the good or the positive. Mm -hmm. That's the antidote for not finding fault. Mm -hmm. So you're deviating your mind and thinking more positive. Well, you, yeah, well, you're transforming your consciousness in the, in the right way. Mm -hmm. if, if I tell you, don't think about something, is it possible? <laughs> Don't think about this. <laughs> I'm naming it. I'm saying don't think about watching television. <laughs> if you have a tendency to watch television and I say don't think about it, you'll think, huh, I'm thinking about something I want to do. I'm, I'm trying to think about, not think about something I'd like to do. <laughs> then you'll do it. <laughs> That's good. Thank you. Thank you so much. You'll have to you practice. Krishna consciousness needs means to replace the negative with the positive. That's all. Okay. Yeah. That's that's very nice. So not always, just not just empty out the negative and there's a void there. There's, there can there's no void ever. Mm. No such thing as a void. Void means you fill it back up with the same thing. Mm. Yeah, because I find it more hard, um, the subtle offenses, than like uh, when I do it like in person. I mean, uh, because mind throws, keeps throwing like a lot of things and which I don't want to do it. But my consciousness, I always want, okay, I always try to focus on Krishna. But mind keeps uh, like... Why, why do you give so importance to what you these negative thoughts? Mm -hmm. why, do, why do you put, give some some uh, attention or importance to them. Just dismiss them, that's all. When they come into your mind, dismiss them. Don't think about them. Think about the positive, that's all. Yes, Maharaj, um, I try to that's, read. That, that's the problem. You mm -hmm. negative thoughts and, and then you're analyzing me and you're saying, oh, I don't like them, but they're still there. <laughs> You have to replace them or shut them down, either one. Mostly replace them. That's why we say, think about Krishna. <laughs> think about devotional service. <clears throat> think about chanting Hare Krishna. 
it's not a matter of you know voidism we're not voidists voidism is you know it's unnatural mm -hmm. there is a class of spiritualists who talk about that the perfection of life is the void getting rid of all material thoughts and entering into nothing but that's not possible if i ask you think of nothing try that mm -hmm. what are you what are you going to think of <laughs> you're going to think of something yeah you might even think of the word nothing but you're still thinking of something <laughs> so don't worry about and don't don't feed these thoughts get rid of them that's all replace them mm -hmm. unless you like them if you like them they'll stay there and, and you'll feed them Oh, no, definitely not much. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, just replace them, that's all. Mm. So every thought it comes, I have to replace it so it goes off from the mind. Yeah, yeah. When you, and that's, 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 what, that's what it means to practice Krishna consciousness, to bring in Krishna. <laughs> yeah, when I try to do, read a book, it comes down again, I see that. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Fun. The mind is not is nonsense. <laughs> it's just nonsense. It's always full of stuff we don't need or don't want. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Hare Krishna. <laughs> The devotees, are, is there anyone who would like to ask anything or share realization? Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, my humble obeisances to you Maharaj, all glories to Srila Prabhupada Maharaj. Hare Maharaj. So Maharaj, I just wanted to ask, you know, when, uh, whenever we are getting all these negative thoughts and then we try and, you know, put, as you said, replace them with positive thoughts. I think sometimes those uh, replacement of those negative thoughts with positive thoughts is not really, um, you know, practical. It is practical to replace them with the thoughts, but whatever you're thinking that, you know, positive will happen, we might think, you know, we might think it will happen, but it's not practical that it will happen. So then is it still okay to think like that? Yeah, well, just keep trying. The strength of the negative thoughts makes it hard or easy, depending on what, how strong they are. So you have to bring, it's like you're trying to chant Hare Krishna, but your mind is going here and there. And then you have to really make an effort to hear. You have to really make an effort to bring in Krishna into the, into the mind. So uh, why should we be, you know, discouraged or think that it's not possible? You just have to practice. Prabhupada said, Krishna consciousness is simply practice. Mm -hmm. Practice, practice, practice. Don't expect perfection you know, immediately, you have to practice. Practice thinking of Krishna. <laughs> so practicing positive Yeah, practice positive chanting. Positive. Yeah. The, you know, the strength of those negative or un, undesirable thoughts are just indications of our material attachments, that's all. And how strong they are is indicated how much materially attached we are. So overcome that and develop spiritual attachment. You have to practice. <laughs> There's an old English saying, practice makes perfect. <laughs> yes, my aunt. And they say habit is second nature. So 
material de desires are our second nature. It's not our first nature. Our first nature is spiritual consciousness, pure consciousness. But because we've been practicing material life so long, it becomes foremost. So as they say, if you want to get rid of a habit, you replace it with another habit. So how to get in the habit of thinking of Krishna. <laughs> Get in the habit of, you know, serving Krishna. Use the mind in a spiritual way. When these material thoughts come up, just go for Krishna consciousness. That's all. With a little more intensity. That's all. Practice, practice, practice. Oh, I love your answer. Absolutely love it. You know, such a way, nice way to explain it that, yeah, just keep practicing it and keep bringing Krishna consciousness to every thought. Then it will be positive anyways. Yeah, don't get discouraged because you're guaranteed success if you continue. <laughs> and you'll get, if you keep practicing and make the effort, Krishna will also come. As they say, the more, the more harder you try, the more you bring in the mercy of Krishna. And with, Did you say guaranteed success? Yeah, and then Krishna's mercy makes everything successful. Woohoo! Guaranteed. Okay, that's great. <laughs> how much do you want Krishna, and how much do you want material life? We have to we have to increase our desire for Krishna and decrease our desire for material life. That's all. And then it becomes easier and easier. I really want Krishna. <laughs> we have to we have to think like that. Yes, Maharaj. So increase, uh, you know, our devotion towards Krishna consciousness and decrease our material desires. That will come automatically as you increase your your Krishna consciousness. Yes, Maharaj. <laughs> practice, practice, practice. Yes, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Trying, definitely trying every minute. I'll give you a little practical example. Just take, um, make these little signboards or little Maybe you might say, uh, what, what can I use? Uh, oh, maybe just a little framed statements and paste them up all around your house on the walls where there is verses of, from the Bhagavad Gita, from the Srimad Bhagavatam, pictures of Krishna, more pictures of Krishna, more statements. Of, Put them up in different places around the house. Decorate the walls with them. And that reminds you of Krishna more and more. People do that. When they look in a certain direction, they see a verse. When they look in a certain direction, they see a picture of Krishna. Absolutely, Maharaj. Absolutely going to do that. Yeah, then the mind gets gets accustomed to that mood. Everything around you reminds you of Krishna. Mm -hmm. Yes, Maharaj. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Jai Ho. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Anyone, anyone else has any question, comments, realizations? Mm, I think I have to depart. We're about an hour. Yeah. We're about almost a half hour over. And, yeah. and on the half hour, I have another program to start. So. Maharaj, so with your permission, we can end the call here. Thank you. Yeah, so I think I have to leave. Otherwise, I'll be late for my next engagement.
Okay, thank you very much. Thank all you. glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to the process of chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Thank, Thank you, Guru Maharaj, for your time and association. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj. See you in the